We just got another reveal here from Warhammer 40k with Games Workshop, and we finally get the new models coming to the Space Wolves and the Greenskins. So, or um, the Orcs, sorry. Let's take a look here. Let's just watch this bad boy. It's Ladies awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. In the green corner, the mighty goth warlord, an undisputed leader of the great war, Gazgol, Mag, Uruk, in the blue gray corner, he is the I mean, this guy could be the voice actor for like any green uh, orc going forward. Ragnar, Black May. Let the fight begin. Man, gotta say, Games Workshop has really like upped their video production quality over the years. Like, this is awesome. Let's jump back here real quick. I, this is to give you a really good idea of the scale of these two models. Like, Ragnar Blackman himself is awesome. His model has been god-awful looking for so many years. So it's awesome to see him get that final big push into the current 8th edition Warhammer 40k. Like, uh, he looks amazing. Um, he's a great Primaris looking model. I I'm super stoked on him. But <laughs> I think Gaz Cole wins the rule of cool here today. Like, look at the horns here. It They're they're the exhausts of, of an orc truck. Like, look at the smoke and everything billowing out of his uh, his quad cannon here. Look, look at his claw has even gotten beefier. Like, he is... Without a doubt, the coolest orc model I have ever seen in my life. And I've been playing this game for, I don't know, like 20 years. Um, just to look at these guys, I was looking to see if we were going to get any more green skin models, uh, orcs, orc, uh, space orc models. I don't think those guys are any different. I haven't looked at the range in a long time to, to really be able to tell. Um, we have some, some mega knobs in the background there. So um, hopefully we will get a reveal later today. Uh, finding out more stuff coming, hopefully with, with War of the Beast here, not just these two models. But if it were just these two models, it would play in line with a lot of the releases that have been coming coming with Psychic Awakening. We have not gotten a full range revamp or anything like that in Psychic Awakening. The closest thing we've gotten is maybe one or two, two accompanying units with a new Lord. Um, or, I'm sorry, hero, or, or I'm sorry, character that has been revamped as well. So... Looking at Ragnar Blackmane here, we can see that he's gotten quite the overhaul here. He's got a lot of the same aesthetic, though, from his original model. The same Frost Sword here uh, making its uh, appearance as he crosses the Rubicon Primaris. And it's a really, really, really sick touch here. I love the way that they've done his model. It looks amazing. It looks fantastic. And it's a very dynamic pose, right? It's almost very reminiscent of the third or second edition Warhammer 40k Space Wolf book with the Blood Claw leaping off of the uh, snowy cliff onto some orcs. So it's a really cool uh, little motif here. And I think overall this is such an amazing looking model and it kind of plays very well in with what Games Workshop's been releasing as far as very awesome, dynamic, heavily detailed plastic models. I mean, plastic models have come so far from the days of like the 90s and the turn of the millennium to now where not just Games Workshop is doing big, wide-scale plastic model launches. There are so many Kickstarter campaigns and so many D&D um, kind of supplementary companies that have popped up and a lot of competition to uh, Warhammer 40k that have arisen that uh, plastic miniature production quality has just taken such a huge leap uh, in the past decade alone, let alone five years. So... Um, really, really, really enjoying what we get with Ragnar Blackman. And I mean, taking a look at the story of the, of the Space Wolves here, I know a lot of people like to make the the silly trope that, oh, they're just Space Furies. Uh, furries, sorry. Space Wolves are, without a doubt, some of the most interesting Space Marines uh, from, uh, from strictly a lore and story perspective as far as what they pursue um, and how they go about it. I mean, they don't really kind of take things... Um, on the on the cheek, you know, I don't turn the other way. They they do what's right for people. I mean, they 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 do that more often than not, and that's what's getting them in so much trouble with the Inquisition, and why they're always kind of like looked down the nose by a lot of other chapters or even just a lot of other portions of the Imperium. <clears throat> they will always kind of be true to the ideals set out to them 
by Ragnar, or I'm sorry, not Ragnar Blackmane, by Lehman Russ. <laughs> so I've always really been enamored with the Space Wolves. I mean, maybe it's because they were my very first Warhammer 40k faction ever, um, but I really, really enjoyed their um, lore and where they've come. And, and, and then in the Psychic Awakening, they've kind of had a, a, a very terrible time. <laughs> They've lost a whole ton of the chapter. Um, you know, Magnus the Red besieged them once more during the Dark Imperium. So they've, they're kind of clamoring back up for, or clamoring back up from things and rebuilding with the Primaris in tow. And the Rubicon Primaris here with Ragnar Blackmane is a great way to kind of push them into that next step for the Psychic Awakening. So I'm excited to see uh, where the, the Space Wolves story goes in this Psychic Awakening book with the Beast. I mean, I don't think that I, the, the whole shtick here is going to be like, it's time to silence the Beast once and for all. I highly doubt we're going to be losing this guy as part of this, the lore of Warhammer 40k. But, you know, when I take a look at the Space Wolves, I look at uh, chapters like the Blood Angels or the any kind of the Templars. Uh, when I look at the Black Templars or when I look at the Imperial Fists or the Crimson Fists, I see some, some of the very few chapters that are very true to the way that they were first imagined. Um, I'm not really a huge fan of the Ultramarines narrative, so I, I can't really just jump in 100% with them. Uh, but I, I really think that a lot of the, the hate, or at least the, um, the mockery of the Space Wolves, is not really warranted. Um, aside from their overly, over-the-top aesthetic, I think that they're, they have a really, really strong lore. Now, from the Orc perspective, uh, they are amazing. Like, look at this model. This model is so sick. Like, I'm trying not to, like, overhype it, but it's... But it's pretty, it's easily one of the most like intimidating like badass looking orc models ever. Like look at this thing, it is huge. I I can't imagine like we get an idea for the scale here, but I, I thought he had a bow and arrow when I saw this picture. Um, I want to see a a picture of this thing next to like a dreadnought, and we'll probably get more uh, reveals as the week goes on, leading up to the pre order of Gas Call here. Uh, but Gaskell is kind of taking on that mantle of the beast. You know, he's kind to create the biggest wall ever. And he's gotten bigger, badder, uh, and more disgusting, and as you can clearly tell. And the orcs have had a very interesting kind of way to kind of push in and out of the lore in the 8th edition. They, they haven't had the kind of center point that Chaos has, or the Eldar have, or the Dark Eldar have, or even the Necrons have had a bigger pull up. Uh, a portion of the lore than the orcs really. I feel like the orcs have just kind of been shoehorned into any kind of weird, advantageous little scenario. I think with Psychic Awakening, War of the Beast, we finally get a scenario where we can take a look at what the orcs have been doing with the Dark Imperium and how they've really been profiting or maybe been disenfranchised with this massive Cisatrix malediction that's ripped through the galaxy. So I'm excited to see where the narrative brings the orcs because the orcs, I feel like, like I said before, they just kind of been tacked on a little too much. They haven't been the main um, antagonist since the wars for Armageddon. So this is kind of Gazcall's way to say, okay, Armageddon three and four weren't my best approaches. Maybe it was two and three. Um, oh, it's three and four. It's three and four. Yeah, it's three and four. Um, weren't my best. Let me see what I can really do now. And I'm really excited to see where this this growing narrative for the orcs goes because I think that they do need that big scary presence. I mean, if you take a look at the War of the Beast, they directly threatened Terra. I mean, the Beast himself was so massive that he went toe to toe with a Primarch, really with like not not much of a problem, it seemed like, you know. I mean, when we look at the Ulnor campaign and we look at Horus fighting a, uh, a, a the war boss of that of that empire, um, he defeated him and it talks about how, you know, I, I was down to the wire and I almost lost, but we don't get the really kind of um drawn out picture that we do of the beast during the beast arises campaign that that happened the war of the beast that happened so long ago so this will be interesting to see the orcs kind of unite in a very scary kind of way the orcs have always been this cosmic terror much in the same way that the tyranids are and remember the orcs were first created to fight against the satan and the necrons they have this lineage that spans back alongside the eldar they're they're about the same age you know the crocs which were the primogenitors of the orcs are right there along with the eldar created by the old ones to fight in the war in heaven so it's very uh, cool to see these guys getting a nice revamp. Hopefully more of their range will get a revamp because the Orc Boys are some of the oldest models to date next to some of the older um, HQ choices for a lot of factions. So very excited to see where this is going here. Uh, we're going to be getting another reveal in a couple hours. Well, a couple hours, it's 
10 a.m. where I am now. It's supposed to be at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So once we get that gamma reveal from uh, Games Workshop, we will hopefully hear about a lot of Age of Sigmar, Warcry, Warhammer 40k, and a lot of other goodies, which I will be covering in its own video. And I do have a Lumineth Lowdown video um, I'm going to go into, I'm going to save it for tomorrow because there's just so many reveals today. We've had the Total War Warhammer patch. We've had this reveal. We're going to do the Gamma reveal later today. So the Lumineth Lowdown will hold until tomorrow, um, but we'll talk about all that action as it comes out. <clears throat> as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one and take care.